Hey, this video is about being a landlord and the best practices to implement into your business. Hey, I am Mr. Macek. Welcome to the channel where I talk all about real estate investing, general investing principles, and just in general making money. Hey, I was just checking my YouTube analytics. It's telling me that 73.6% of all the views that I have had in the last 28 days are from non-subscribers. Let's please change that, subscribe below. So over the 15 or 20 years that I've been a landlord, I have learned quite a bit of lessons from the about 400 tenants that I've had. And this video is really gonna outline six best practices that you should take as a landlord from day one. Don't wait, these things have made my life easier. Real quick, let's recap. First of all, it's gonna be about having some software. Second, gonna be about tenant pre-qualification process. Third, you really need to learn the laws and the residential statute. Number four is about accepting late payments and how to do it. Number five is about pictures. And number six is about protecting your assets like your appliances and how to do it the best way possible. Hey, the question of the day is, are you a landlord? And if yes, how many doors do you have? Meaning how many rentals do you have? Please comment in the comments below. Just pause this video real quick write it in there. All right, let's get started. Number one, software. So about four years ago, I implemented software because I was managing, I think about 15 or so uh, rentals at the time. And what I did is I did quite a bit of research. I wanted to keep it on a very low budget. And since I had under 20 properties, well, I found a software that allows me to scale up as I add more properties. And I found Buildium. Now this is a software solution that once in a while is a little cumbersome, but overall it has really changed my life most specifically is when I file taxes. Since I have properties owned in separate LLCs to be used as a corporate veil, I need to file separate tax returns on each one of my properties. And that's where Buildium rescues me. Uh, basically what I get to do is I get to just do a report on the reporting end of it and then I just submit that to my accountant and he takes care of the rest. Also another thing that I really love is that there is a back-end tenant portal where they get to the tenants get to log in and see all of their payments exactly where they're at and I even have a few of the properties set up so that they can make payments online and it's super convenient. Now a word of caution about making payments online is that I accepted uh, checks and credit cards and unfortunately one time I had this scenario where you know an ex-girlfriend moved out and did a chargeback on the credit card debt and since I did not have a written lease and a written signed authorization for that charge she got her money back. Aside from that though, it's been a major time saver for me. So Buildium all the way. I know there's other softwares that are excellent, but this one works for me. And until I get to about 50 properties, I'm gonna continue using it. That was not supposed to be an endorsement for Buildium. It's just what I happen to use. So number two is about the tenant pre-qualification process. You need to make sure to qualify your tenants very well. So here's what's going on. When you have a property and you have it at the fair market value, you're gonna get a decent amount of people interested in it. If you have it overpriced, you're gonna be down to the people that are really desperate and for some reason or another, maybe they have a huge dog, they can't get a rental traditionally or somewhere else. And then there's the underpriced market. And if you do that, then you're gonna have quite a bit of people. I highly recommend you do this, even if it's only by 50 or $100 a month. You're gonna get a lot of people who want to move in. And that's where the proper tenant pre-qualification process comes in because you wanna pick the one that's the best. That's the one that's gonna stay at your property for a long time. So you're looking for a proper background check. I use uh, mysmartmove.com, which is a TransUnion uh, product. And TransUnion is one of the three credit bureaus. And aside from that, I also recommend you go and you check their employment history. So literally ask for pay stubs, ask for the employer's name and phone number, the boss or whoever it is, double check that they have no intentions on firing this person. And lastly is their prior rental history. Now I do take that last part with a grain of salt because if they're a bad tenant, the last landlord that they're currently at is gonna say this is a great tenant. Get them out of here, accept them. I don't want them here anymore. So this is a little bit subjective, right? Also, they could just give you their uncle's name and phone number and here you are talking to some relative that's gonna talk them up and pretend that they're the landlord. So that part is a grain of salt. But the whole mysmartmove.com, that's a great way to get it started. The tenant pays for the application process and I just get a result saying accept, deny, or something in the middle. Okay, number three is about the law. Learn the residential statutes for tenancy, 
okay? Now, this is really important. I was very fortunate that on my first property that I owned, I had a tenant that lived with me. He had two rooms out of a four bedroom place and I had a police officer teach me about residential tenancy. Uh, so I was very fortunate and because of that I started reading the Florida statutes on residential tenancy and it taught me quite a bit and every I don't know six months I read them over again I just like to really educate myself in the law so that I'm not breaking any law and also I get to predict some of the behavior that I can expect from tenants and where is it that a pitfall can happen you don't need to be a lawyer to understand it but the first time it might be sound a little bit like mumbo jumbo and there's a lot of referencing this paragraph references some other paragraph that references yet another paragraph so there's a lot of jumping around but eventually you get the hang of it and you're really going to start understanding the gist of the law and what are your obligations and how long do you have to fix that leaky toilet for example you really should know that okay number four is about accepting late payments i'll be honest i confess I am not that great at this. This is definitely something that I'm still working on after all these years or a couple decades really. So that's, that's partially because people have valid excuses and I understand life happens. However, here's what I would suggest. Before you sign a lease, make a clear explanation to the tenant of what's going to happen. First and foremost, you're not the same landlord that they had prior. So they don't know how you work and you need to let them know ahead of time prior to signing a lease and making sure there's at least a verbal understanding of how it's going to work. Here's how it works. On the first of the month, rent is due. On the fifth of the month, rent is overdue. In that time frame of the second, third and fourth, that is the grace period, meaning there's no late charges, but it is late. There's just no charges yet. And if rent is not deposited into the bank account by the first end of day, then there's gonna be a three day notice on their door. That's Florida. Florida has a three day notice of non-payment of rent, either move or pay, and you got three days to do it. So they get to understand that from the get go, you do not play with late rent. That's it. You just don't entertain that. There is no late payment. Also, if they are late two times in their lease, they are being evicted. It's a breach of a lease and you are no longer interested in having them as a tenant. I know it may sound a little strict to some people. However, if you run your business with clear expectations, you will have to enforce those expectations and they're actually going to help your business. Even though it may feel a little weird right when you're filing for an eviction because they've been late twice, but I'm sorry, you just can't put up with that. The way I see it, is that I have given my property over to you and you are to give me the money. It's not like I'm closing the property for two days and just because I'm closing it, but so why should you be two days late just because you're late? You know, that's the way I see it. It's a clear understanding of what we are trading property for money. And there's a clear understanding of what the repercussions are. Okay. Number five, this has saved me probably the most amount of money out of anything that I've just mentioned. And that is photography. So first of all, I have a Matterport 3d scanner. You can check it out on matterport.com. I am a real estate agent, so I do use this technology for that, but I also scan all my rental properties. It allows me to extract great photos but more importantly allows me to document the state of the property that it's in when I give it to them. Now the second thing that I do is I take hundreds of photos before someone moves in and the day I receive keys. Literally hundreds. Here's the process. In order to take very effective photos I go into one corner of a room and I take up middle and down photo and then i go to the other corner of the room up middle down and i just go through the whole room then i step into the next room and i do the same thing over again so every photo every room i should say is getting quite a bit of photos at least 12 at the very minimum this actually gives me usually about 500 to 1,000 photos for a whole property including the exterior including the grass the lawn the fence everything you can possibly take a photo of. Just do it with your cell phone. Now, one time I had someone swap out a refrigerator. Since I have numerous properties, I don't remember exactly which refrigerator was where. And the person actually swapped out a refrigerator for something smaller. And then I said, 
wait a minute, this, is this my fridge? And I went to look at the photos and bam, I had evidence and I was able to get a new refrigerator from the security deposit that they had. Another time, I had someone who really like did a great job just touching the place up, but the ceiling fan in the living room had no lights and it was really small. And I checked photos and they put a brand new one in there. It's just that it was like one of those $30, $40 ones from Home Depot in a main living room area where we had a $250 one in there. So, you know, I just got to replace that with the proper one and I was part of their security deposit. I'm not in the business of taking people's security deposits. I'm in the business of getting rent. But when you start trying to do things like that, I'm sorry, that's just not right. And number six is about how to protect yourself. So first of all, is for that photography really does help protect you from point number five, but you should take additional photos in point number six. And the additional photos would be the inside of the refrigerator, the inside of the stove, working, showing that the element tops are all working by turning them on and taking a picture of all four hot elements and the stove as well. Then the serial numbers of all the appliances. And now how you protect yourself with it is that you take those serial numbers and you actually put it in your lease. That this lease includes personal property and the personal property is a refrigerator Here's the brand name, here's the model number, and here's the serial number. Let me tell you a quick story about that. I don't remember who it was, it wasn't me, but there's a story where there was a landlord who pulled up to his property and the tenant was actually packing a U-Haul. So the gentleman called the cops because he saw that his personal property was being removed and packed into the U-Haul, the refrigerator, the stove, dishwasher, front door, I mean everything. So the cop came by and he asked to see the lease. And after he reviewed the lease, he said, wait a minute, none of this mentions any of the appliances in there. And the tenant was saying that those were his appliances. Unbelievable. Now it went to court, the small claims court, but who wants to deal with that? If you're gonna be out of a fridge because someone took it and you're gonna take them to court, it's gonna be three, four weeks before anything even happens and you're not able to rent it in the meantime, I mean, you just have to fork out the money anyway. So basically just protect yourself by having it in your lease. Hey, if you like this video, please click on the like button. I would really appreciate that. Also watch this video, shows you how you can get into real estate investing with very little money. You can have a plan of buying 10 properties in 10 years. Watch the video.